you know, Aaron, you're too small and, and get out of here, you know, uh, why are you out here? So for my height to uh, be in the history books with an iconic world famous team, it's amazing. So I went from, you know, being like cursed for being short to like being like praised in, in the history books for world famous teams. Hi, this is Shlomo Sonson, the host of the Teenage Impact Podcast, where we share stories, tips, and strategies on how you as a teenage kid can overcome your daily struggles. I have compiled a new free ebook. It's called The 52 Tips I Wish Someone Told Me in High School. These are life-changing tips I, I compiled based off my experiences in the past 28 years of my life. This can honestly be life-changing tips. It's only around 20 pages, so it's a quick 30-minute to an hour read. If you just implement one or two of these tips every single month, you could be in a completely different situation than you are now. Today's podcast guest is Jonte Not So Small Hall. He is a former Harlem Globetrotter, and he is the sh first shortest player in team history of 80-something years that have been in existence. When he was a child, he was raised in Baltimore around drugs. He had the opportunity to not only take drugs, but also sell drugs. But because he had such a great influence in his life and because of the passion of, his, of basketball and the goals and dreams he had, he decided not to go down the route and pursue basketball. It wasn't an easy journey. He was always known as the smallest kid and he had a lot of naysayers where people said, he was always too small to play basketball and that he should give up his dream. Just about last year, he stepped away from the Harlem Globetrotters and he pursued something greater than himself to motivate and inspire the youth on his story. Give it up for Jonte, not so small, Hall, as he talks about why you are never small for your dreams and goals. Jonte, man, thank you so much for being on the Teenage Impact Podcast. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me, man. It's a pleasure. Pleasure to be on your show, man. And Jonte just has a, a newborn, one month old. So yes. If you, if you hear the baby in the background, yes, that's his kid. That's, his kid. <laughs> that's <But> him. <laughs> Jonte, not so small. Hall, you you mm. were born in Baltimore, born and raised in Baltimore. You. You know, witnessed a lot of drug transactions. You, you were offered to smoke and even sell drugs. How did you avoid that life when it was all around you? Pretty much, ma'am. Um, you know, I had, well, I still have strong parents, very, very strong willing. They kept us grounded. Me and my brother, there's two of us. She just emphasized, you know, you want to go out in the streets, you know, don't look, don't look back, you know. So, of course, every parent, you know, have rules. And if you don't obey them, you know, you got to go. <laughs> At an early age, you know, uh, it's been a lot, been like in the middle of everything, man. It's been a lot of violence. It's just, my heart was just set on becoming something great. I got my first basketball at the age of six. That kept me grounded, man. That kept me focused. And right then and there, I knew I wanted to play basketball. So regardless of what I was seeing, um, that kind of gave me the confidence and, 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 and the strength to want to be able to pursue basketball and, and not get caught up in the streets. So basketball played a major role back then. So I won't go left, you know, it helped me not to go left. Mm -hmm. And and also my parents, of course, my parents. Mm -hmm. And you start playing basketball at six. Um, from what I've noticed, you didn't have a basketball hoop. So how did you play basketball? So, uh, so um, okay. So I received my first basketball at the age of six. Um, I started playing organized basketball at the age of nine. Yes, back then, um, it wasn't a lot of basketball courts in Baltimore City, like my side of town where I grew up at. So what we do, uh, we get a milk, a milk crate, like with you know milk being the crates, and we get a saw or, or somebody get a lighter and just you know we cut the the bottom out and hang it up on a pole, or we nail it up on a um, on a tree. So so yeah, man. So I got my practice right then and there, um, from sunlight to sundown, and I still don't know how how. I did that, man, growing up. Being out in 98-degree weather, yes, man. So after that, we played in the court, and then we were going to um, a little basketball court that we had. So I was playing basketball from sunlight to sundown. Uh -huh. So basketball was your dream, and you yes. had something going for you. And you also had good influence. Your mom 
you always mentioned it was a huge influence Absolutely. in your life. Well, what if someone was raised um, with not influential parents like yours? Someone who didn't have yeah. as much positive influence and they want to get out of you know, that life and want to go pursue their passion. What tips do you have for them? Just, I, it's, 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 it's tough like um, when you don't have that positive influence in your life. When you don't have that, you have to dig deep. You have to, and, and, it's, and it's easy said and done, man. Like it's, it's tough. Just try to dig deep. Um, know who you are as a person and follow your heart. Like don't get discouraged about your living environment, your upbringing. Um, if you want to be a lawyer, you want to be a basketball player, you want to be a police officer, you want to be a nurse, a doctor, you know, just dig deep and, and, and trust me, you just got to have faith and you get out that situation, you know? Well, I mean, whatever passion you do have, and sometimes a lot of people have to experiment with their passions, you know. You Absolutely. Found, you, you found yours early on in life, but sometimes people don't find their passion until later on. So experimentation, mm -hmm. I would say, is the biggest thing. Absolutely. And I, and I try to just, uh, when I go do my speaking engagements, man, I don't want people to just get caught up in, okay, he's a basketball player. He, he's, he's, he's pushing the whole basketball thing. Like, no, I'm pushing you never too small to do anything. And I always try to, you know, emphasize, Pick something that you that you love or that you're great at or that you have some type of um, ability in and just it just focus on it. I mean, it's okay to have different things you want to do, but so you won't get um, anxiety and stress. You know, try to try to get one, and then if that one will work out, find another passion that you're passionate in. That's what I probably. I mean, that's what I preach, man. When I mm -hmm. go into these schools, just try to dig deep and focus on one thing. Mm -hmm. So that that that's your entire brand, not so small. Yes. And, yes. And you talk about a lot that you know you were the first first shortest in Harlem Globe Charter history to mm. play basketball there, but that metaphor is not just for height or for weight. It's also in your mind. You're not Absolutely. small to do anything. Whether you want to go pursue law or become a doctor or become a teacher, you mm. can do whatever you want to and set your mind into. Absolutely. Um, it's, 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 it's amazing how um, growing up, I was always, you know, put down. I mean, bullied. Of course, you want to call it that. Of course, it was bullied. Bullying. I didn't get bullied physically. I got bullied verbally, you know, hearing you're too small and, and get out of here. You know, uh, why are you out here? So for my height, the, uh, been in history books with an iconic world famous team, it's amazing. So I went from, you know, being like, cursed for being short to like being like praised and in, in the history books for world famous teams anything is possible if i could do it standing up five two um anybody could do it man man i i wish i had some type of influence like you while growing yeah. up because when i was when i was 14 i was mm. also one of the smallest I, I entered high school i think i was 100 pounds really uh, five one five two Okay, he's about my height. I, I can't play basketball. I'm five seven yeah. now, but I can't play basketball because I'm too small, and I can't play football because mm -hmm. I'm too small. So I went ahead and did running. But how did you overcome all those naysayers that says, "Oh, you're too small," and there's always going to be naysayers in your life. Absolutely. How, how do you overcome overcome that? Oh, that's a great question. Just just know who you are. It's like when, when you when you growing up, um, you you like I know a lot of people go through um anxiety uh you know they don't really know who they they are you know they're still trying to find themselves and and just digging deep and being comfortable with it or being short or, or being tall or being small or whatever overweight you know being be comfortable who you are so that's how i overcame a lot of the naysayers because i knew i had a mission man i knew i wanted to help my mom get healthy i wanted to get out the projects you know so i, I knew at the time i wasn't gonna let nobody stop me growing up that was my whole intake on how i dealt with the naysayers um i just had that that battery in my back man i i said you know what john tell you can't get caught up in what they saying and you just gotta prove them wrong that kind of like motivate me man like when i could be able to like prove somebody wrong you know I, I get i get turned on by that man i get excited about that like wow you know so what okay i'm short so what so that makes that made me go in the gym extra hours to work on things to be great at so that motivated me, man. Man, that's 
that's amazing. You had a laser, laser focused vision of what you wanted in your life and how you wanted mm -hmm. it and nothing was going to stop you. And bro, I'm still going to do that, man. As we speak, uh, everybody, um, saying like because i stepped away from being a glow trotter you know i stepped down i could have kept playing i didn't retire i just i just stepped away from it man and uh it was time after being to 57 countries all 50 states uh, my heart was just telling me the youth need a positive influence out there and i i, I was willing to risk it all and 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 go for it man and i still did with the naysayers like why you do that like you ain't gonna be no successful speaker you know you from the projects you know i still go do that man so i'm still proving people wrong take us through your journey f to becoming a professional basketball player from high school all the way to the harlem globe trotters mm -hmm. so okay so after high school um first year of high school i was only about 4 11 uh with shoes on i was very tiny man got to high school played junior varsity had a had a solid um first year then I got moved up to varsity my 10th grade year. From my 10th grade year, I knew I, knew I wasn't going to grow much. So what I did, I had to write colleges to tell them to come see me. And, of course, none of them respond. You know, so um, I was doing that all through my whole high school career, writing colleges. I'm John Tay, John Tay Hall. You know, I boosted up my height a little bit. I, I said I was 5'5", five five, you know, so <laughs> – Nobody responded, man. So um, after my 12th grade year, I had to walk on to a community college. The college is called CCBC Catonsville. And I walked on, didn't play much, but it was a learning experience. And I was going through the naysayers then too. Like, John T. Wild, like, bro, you're not, you're too small. I kept working and I took somebody's starting job, middle of the year in college. And then, man, I don't like to use this term dropout, but I had to drop out of college, you know, um, to take care of my mother. My mom has MS, multiple sclerosis. You know, I said, Mom, I'm, I'm going to take care of you. So I dropped out of college, um, had to work a nine to five. I did janitorial work, and I took that in pride, man. I, I just knew back in my mind I was going to make it still. Even, even in a situation like that, to all the listeners out there, you're going to have, like, like roles, like you're going to get bumped off the course. And, it's, and it, may, it may be out your control. You got to dig deep. Again, you got to dig deep and say, uh, I might have to deal with this for right now, and then it's going to happen. I just got to stay focused, um, stay prayed up, and it's going to happen. After that, um, when I dropped out of college and started working, um, I saved all my money up, and I went to a tryout in North Carolina, and I wanted to see where I was, where I was at uh, basketball-wise. So I tried out for the NBA Development League. For all the listeners that don't know what that is, so your NBA is your varsity. And the NBA Development League is your junior varsity. So that was my first tryout. And, of course, I didn't make it. My height played a major role. But I got an opportunity to see where I was at as far as my skill level. And out of 200 guys, I was the last 25 to be there. You know, and I was the smallest one, of course. That I got an opportunity to see where I was at. And um, I came back home feeling good about myself. I'm in the gym all the time. And, and, of course, I didn't make it. So that kept, I kept trying out, kept trying out, kept trying out. And then, man, it was a time where I was about to give up. I was that close to giving up, man. Um, I had a lot of people tell me give up, you know. Um, if it didn't happen now, you're not going to make it, you know. And at this time, I'm like 23, bro, 23, 24. And, it, you know, it was, it was getting to me, man. So I was, it was like, okay, I still want to play. You know, I'm, I'm, in my, I'm not even in my prime at this time. I gave basketball one more opportunity. I emailed the Washington Generals, um, the Globetrotters opponents. They gave me an opportunity, man. It wasn't a lot of money, but I got the exposure. And I did that for a year and a half. Globetrotters loved me so much. They gave me a tryout. And I made history, man. And that's, that's how the, the, the story um, started. Wow. Yeah, that, is, that is amazing how Thanks, you, you just – overcame every single obstacle that was put mm -hmm. in your way, no mm -hmm. matter what people said about you, no matter whether it's your height, whatever it was. And then you also went, I uh, got sidetracked a little bit, took care of your mom, saved enough mm -hmm. money and pursued your dreams again. And you push yourself to that moment where you almost gave up, but you didn't give up. You gave mm -hmm. yourself one last try. And sometimes that's all it takes is one last try. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. It only takes one person to, 
to help change your life, you know, somebody mm-hmm. to notice you, you know? So. Mm-hmm. What was the, a couple of lessons you got out of this whole journey? Oh man, the lessons, man, is just persistent, staying persistent, staying dedicated and staying grounded, staying grounded. Don't get out of character. You know, um, I learned a lot of that, man. Cause when you got a character, when you, when you lose your faith and your confidence, you know, that it starts with that. So when you, when you do that, man, it, it it's so easy to get like, side, side, you know, sidetracked it and you lose focus. Mm-hmm. So that was the, my whole thing. Confidence, um, prayed up, faith and termination. Okay. Okay. And how did you get involved with uh, speaking to the youth? So I took it amongst myself, man. Like, uh, just like emailing the generals, I took it amongst myself and I say, you know what, I want to, I, I want to start speaking, you know, and I looked up, how can I be a part of it? I mean, that's when I met Mark Merrill. Like I said, I w- we, we was together at one time. Um, I was a part of his um, champion of choices. Took me in, you know, showed me the ropes. I, he said, man, you, you have a, you have a story. You, you know, a lot of, a lot of the youth need to hear that. That's when it started, man. And right now, you know, um, I just signed with a new, new company and got some, I just did a um, engagement here in Baltimore and it went great, man. I inspired a lot of kids, man. And just, I just feel like this is my calling. This, this, this where, this where I supposed to be. The glow try to set the tone. They gave me the platform, and that's where I need to be at, man. And I think, well, I know I feel with my gut feeling speaking, and and inspiring the youth is, is 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 where is that, man? Because you know we we losing a lot of our youth, bullying, absolutely. Uh, identity you know they don't know who they are and they get caught up what people say and yeah man so they need that they they need that positive influence man absolutely and that's exactly why i started the teenage impact because suicide is one of the leading causes yes. of death yes. yes and mark mara and i were actually talking about this um last week and how he he was talking about he almost ended his life mm. and if he would end his life then the blessings that would have came recently in the past 15 years wouldn't have came. He said, sometimes you end your life very too soon. And all you need, like you said, is a mentor or Absolutely. one person to change your life, to turn your mm-hmm. life around. And, but don't end your life too soon because you never know the blessings that can come out of it. Absolutely. Amen to that, brother. You're right about that. And w- w- what, what are one or two things that you preach to the kids? When you go when you go to the schools, so I preach about uh, again. You know, my this is my whole brand. Uh-huh. You know, my jaunty not so small, and I preach uh, you're never too small to do anything. You know, it's not necessarily I'm not targeting height. I'm targeting like uh, you know, like we talked about just a while ago uh, about education. Like you might be, you might well, they might think you too small to false education to be a lawyer. Too small to do this. You too small to do that. So. That's my whole concept of my logo. You know, it's me, self description of me as a kid, spending the basketball. Basketball is my gift. Backpack on. We need knowledge in everyday life. Shadow come from my heart. It's a big person, all of us. That's what I preach, man. I talk about my life, my upbringing, no matter your living environment, no matter. And I talk about bullying as well. And so my whole presentation is, um, you know, I start out fun, serious, and I ended on fun. You know, because I know kids want to have fun. So I want to interact with them, have fun with them. And then at the same time, I'm serious. You know, you bring so. a basketball along too. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. I got to showcase my tricks, man. So uh-huh. and I get the kids involved, man. I teach them all the glow, try to trick. It's fun, man. It's, it's, it's amazing. Uh-huh. It's amazing. Yeah. The impact I, that I'm having. Out of the f- over, you traveled to over 50 countries playing basketball in yep. 50 states. What would you say? What were some of your best memories? Oh, oh, so one of my best memories, man, was uh, recent. It was like, what? Okay, I resigned last year. It was two years ago, 18, 2018. This, this young lady, man, she made me feel like I was Michael Jackson, man. Like, come find out she was a huge Too Tall fan. You know, my, my, my glow try to name. And uh, my coach said, oh, Too Tall, you have a, a number one fan in the audience. <laughs> and I, you know, and I thought he was playing and man, I saw her, man. And, <laughs> and she was emotional. Like she was shaking, bro. Like she was like, she was like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Like, and, and she was like, I'm such a huge fan. She, she was crying. 
And man, I gave him my headband, I gave him my wristband. And that right there was the highlight of my um, career. One, that, that was one of my best highlights of my career. And what would you say some of the best countries you've been in playing basketball? Um, Spain, Italy, and Greece. Why? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm a people's person, man. And, and I love people that's friendly, man. That's, that's like, you know, hey, hello, hello, hello. Like, some, like, conversate with you, you know. And then, you know, you know, some certain parts in the city, in the States, you know, people don't speak to you unless you speak to them. And then if you speak to them, you, they might not speak back. So it's like they they the culture is 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 is, is loving man. It's it's then I love then I love food. You know the food is great. I love experiment <laughs> with food. Spain is my favorite country, as far as food wise. The atmosphere is beautiful. Yeah, man, I'm a people's person. I like to have fun. I like to get to know people. So that's yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Let's conclude the interview with one one final question. What would you say the key to success is for a sixteen year old? who's trying to find him or herself? Great question. Stay true to yourself. Know who you are. Don't listen to the naysayers. Stay focused. Don't listen to the naysayers and stay focused. Thank you so much, brother. And where can, where can people find you? Okay, my social media is, uh, my Instagram is Jonte Not So Small Hall. Twitter is as well, Jonte Not So Small Hall. Um, Twitter, I'm sorry, Facebook is just Jonte Hall. And my favorite quote I like to live by, um, as long as your heart stands tall, you're not so small. <laughs> love it. Love it, man. Thank you so much for doing this. And Thanks for having me. Wishing man. you the best of luck in your journey of impacting the youth and keep it up. Thank you, brother. Thanks for having me. Jonte, not so small heart, such a, a great human being. He had his one-month-year-old one child with him during the podcast interview. It was so cool to see an, uh, a newborn and a new father while doing the podcast, but he was always such a laser focused human being, which is why he didn't do any drugs and didn't sell any drugs because number one, he had a great influence in his life. And number two, he was laser focused on his dreams and goals and aspirations. He had a lot of naysayers in his life. Hey, Jonte, you can never be a basketball player. You're too short, you're too small. He tried that for several teams. He didn't get accepted, saying that he had the talent, but he didn't have the height. He stepped away from basketball for a little bit to take care of his mom and then went into trying now for other basketball teams where he eventually found the Harlem Globetrotters where he played in over 50 countries in all 50 states. And the number one lesson he wants you to take away from this whole podcast interview is that you are never too small for your goals and aspiration. For him, he uses not so small as a metaphor of him being small for basketball, but he was never small for basketball. He pursued it anyways, and he traveled the country doing what he loved. You might not want to be a basketball player, but maybe you want to be the first person in your family to go to college. Maybe you want to be the first person in your family to become a doctor or a lawyer, whatever you want to do, a singer, a celebrity, whatever dream, aspirations you have, you should go pursue it. Because the only person that can ever tell you that you can't do something is yourself. Everyone else will tell you, but they don't know you like how you know yourself. So if you have a dream that's unrealistic, quote unquote, of what people say, go for it anyways, because you are not so small for your dream. I used to think that pursuing entrepreneurship in high school and college that I didn't have the genes for, I didn't have the smarts for it. So I didn't pursue it because I thought I was so small. But later on in life, when after I graduated college, I knew that entrepreneurs are just like everyone else, which is why I started pursuing entrepreneurship and speaking and inspiring people. So if you have a dream, if you have a goal, go ahead and pursue it. If you haven't done so, please, please, please share the Teenage Impact Podcast with anyone going through a funk, your classmate, your friends, your family members. Also, don't forget to download my free ebook, 52 Tips I Wish Someone Told Me. In high school, trust me, this can entirely change your life if you take an hour out of your day just to skim over it, read it, implement one or two tips every single month, your life will change. Until next time, peace.